about having actually reacting to a blow, whereas if someone comes in and does that, mm -hmm. and you actually go away from it. In Jedi fighting, there is no such thing. They are so strong, you get a lot of kind of stuff around like this, yeah. and basically, things that come out, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I've seen too much. <laughs> I run away. Uh, That's my only trick. <laughs> and a lot of it comes from back here and basically just goes out to there. Right? Thing is, when you're working with these, this type of thing, with wood or with plastic, control is everything. Because this will split in half. So, again, you need basically to be able to bring it forward and to stop it by that. All right? So just take it back there, put your left foot forward, take it back there, right? And then just bring it forward and stop it to there. All right? So you're going to get my leg there. Ready? Okay, ready? Go. Excellent. And again, ready? Go. Good. All right? Okay, first movement routine. Really simple. Ready? Here we go. And right. now, what you need to do is find it round to that side. So you're going to press on it. Take it round, right the way down to there. Which gives me that movement round there, so I can hit to there. Then all you need to do, standing straight, is to block it like that, because you're so good at it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright? So, start from here. Ready? Here we go. One. Now don't rush it. Ready. Over here, get this to the paddle. One. Through. Through. That's it. Hold me back. Okay. You'll also notice in the film, he, they use some of the other moves that we were moving using earlier, like this kind of move here and this kind of move here, because it gives nice, strong, swinging movement. Also, they will have periods where they're holding them together. And you get this extra kind of buzzing kind of sound. You probably noticed in, um, in Highlander, there were periods where the two swords came together and big sparks came off of them. Which is quite, I mean, it looks quite exciting. Nowadays, most of it is put on computer generated afterwards. But what we used in that, on a number of occasions, was we connected the swords up to 12 volt batteries. <laughs> <laughs> With a wire going down here, which is fine. And as soon as you do that, they short out. And you get all these wonderful big bangs and sparks. The only problem with it is you mustn't leave them together <laughs> because they weld. <laughs> what happens is when you take they go, when you take the sword away, it's like that. Good against my heart. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, but you've also got that kind of thing. This is also because of the force, if you like, because you're stronger, you've got more of this upright stance and more kind of fluid. Lots of things around the back there, coming from here, coming over there from there. All right. So a fight to do something like this is probably not quite as difficult as a medieval fight. Because you haven't got too much. You've basically got this kind of movement and coming around in this direction. But to add colour to it, you can obviously put that movement <coughs> in. There are certain things that cliches in fights that I would tend not to do, but they can be used to good effect. Um, the first one is ducking, right? <laughs> Therefore, I would come back here and swing like that, and you would duck and spring up and hit me, right? <laughs> but you have to get the timing right, and it's very obviously very important. I'm watching, I'm looking in her eyes, and I'm making sure you know what the time is. So what's going to happen is I'm going to come back here, bring it right back there, and then I'm going to bring it really quickly through there. And you're going to dump. What always looks absolutely awful <coughs> is if I do it because I'm scared, you're not, going, you're not going to dump. I do it up there. So I have got to aim for her head. I got this one wrong a couple of weeks. <laughs> The young lady had a big, big ear. Alright? So what's going to happen? The time is going to be.
be like this. Ready? One, two. Okay? Ready? Here we go. One, two. <laughs> Later. Ready? Here you go. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared. You go down. Really go down. Don't don't do this. Don't go down. Ready? One. Two. Good. Good work. <laughs> I would prefer, of course, what can happen. Is that you can to make if you want to make it really exciting, what you want to do is you put the people up against the wall like that. Oh, yeah. So when it actually <laughs> comes to <laughs> it, yeah. when it comes to it and you duck, bang, big explosion on the wall. Gives you time to get out of the way. Right? Personally, I prefer to do a variation on that. And that is that actually as that cut comes through, to put the sword up. And so it gets banged out of the way. So what happens is as you go down, you put the sword up. Alright, that's it. Ready? Go. And that gets knocked down the way like that. Good. That gives it a bit more feeling rather than just the duck. The other kind of cliche. <laughs> Here's the jump in the air. Do you want to take your cloak off? You might come down. I'm not doing the face for that. This is Now the question is, how high can you jump? Yeah, I've tried. <laughs> Do you want to try and jump over that? Yeah. Okay. Good, now jump straight up again. <laughs>
No. Uh, sit down. Wait. We talked about that earlier. About mixing that physical stuff in a fight with sword work, which can be really good. And also, you can just do it purely physical, otherwise, and otherwise known as unarmed combat. You don't need weapons at all. Um, you've got this young lady here, looks absolutely gorgeous, dressed as 18th century wench. Absolutely. Normal thing. Um, uh, does anybody, has anybody seen um, the uh, Richard Lester Three Musketeers? Yeah. yeah. Lots of wenches in that, having great fun, picking up people and slamming them down. There are traditionally kind of two types of fight, as far as fist fights are concerned. Um, Liz, would you do your wonderful bit on the, yeah. on the thing again? Which I'm just going to show you two different types of fist fight. There's the old Hollywood fight which has got a great deal of humour in it. Um, it's, it's the type of thing that people can do outrageous things to each other, and it doesn't actually hurt them. And if it does hurt them, they just get up and bounce up afterwards. And then there's the more realistic fight. For me, one of the, where it all changed uh, was with Borman's Point Blank, with Richard Mar um, Marvin, who actually, Lee Marvin, who put in a very, very brutal fight. Only a short one, very, very rude in the middle of their thing. So the first one is John Wayne. Well, I think he appears at the beginning. But the, the first fighting is called Victor McGlagan. He's a wonderful old Hollywood star, very interesting man. Worked in the music halls, um, went in the army, became Provo Marshal of Baghdad, was a great white hope uh, to get the world crown uh, boxing, but lost in the sixth round. Um, and he was known as a magnificent beast. I mean, really, really strong. And he plays the genial Irishman. Now, I love this fight, because it's absolutely great fun. You know, the punches come back from him, there's humour, there's everything in it. But it's got nothing to do with violence, really. It's got to do with people having a good time. <laughs>
putting your finger out like that to punch him in the kidney. Um, obviously, as the guy came flying in, he kicked him straight like that. And then when he was down on the ground, whacked him in like that. All very, very nasty stuff. Please do not try this at home. <laughs> no, don't tell anyone I told you. Absolutely not. However, women fighting. I'm actually getting really worried because those little nasty moves you were talking about were things that my mum taught me to do. Oh, really? I've no, well, I'm really worried then. I've never ever done them, but I'm worried about why my mother would have told me all this stuff. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. Stuff. And, uh... um, women fight differently to men. Totally different. <laughs> they do not fight fair, ever. They do different things. This isn't stereotyping, it's just somehow the way women are. They like to get close in and personal as soon as possible. So you will get scratching, you'll get slapping of faces, you'll get pulling of hair, you'll get wrestling to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> costume provide, you know. Something to costume provide. Um, if a woman actually does a full on punch at a man, what you will get is a big laugh. Always. I guarantee it. Especially if she knocks the man out. So if she comes out, bang, she does one of those. Um, you will get a laugh. And one thing, that's fine if you want to laugh. But one thing, especially in the theatre, which is like the worst moment of your life, is when you're doing a serious fight and people laugh at you. Because the whole of the play has gone down with you. Right? Something like that second fight in Point Blank is very, very difficult to choreograph. Basically, all fights are like dances, and you choreograph them. That one, you choreograph it, then you mess it up, and within certain parameters, you get good sun guys, and you know they're going to get a little bit hurt, and you know, ramming people up against big things and pushing them down on the floor. Um, but on the majority of the time, you try and choreograph everything else. Nicely as possible. Okay, so we're going to have a fight, right? Okay. All right. Lovely looking lady. First thing I check is her fingernails and no big rings. <laughs> <laughs> because, what's this for? Tying you up. Tying you up. So, certain techniques you can use <coughs> without it being too tiny if you were going to fight another one. So, I'm going to pretend to be another one. Hair pulling, all right? Put your hand on top of my head like that, okay? And if be really, go on, grab a handful of hair, all right? And then shake my head about. And back and forwards. Right. Now what that will do is pull lumps out my head, basically, and it will hurt. <laughs> So, what you do is, if possible, you grab my hair, alright? I grab your wrist, because I don't want you to do it. And it's actually me doing all the work, alright? So, I can push it this way, put it that way, put it backwards and forwards, and all you're doing is relaxing and going with it. And because I know that if I push in that direction, I'm going to move my head in that direction. And if I'm going backwards, I'm going like that that I'm actually not going to get hurt. And what it is, is it's down to your act to be really horrible with it. All right? So you can just grab my hair, right? I go up like that, and then we do this.
Stop smiling at the camera. <laughs> If the camera was here and I was going to punch it, sorry, if you're the audience here, and I wanted to punch it in the face, okay, and I was going to do a nice big hay swinger back like this <coughs> and put it out in that direction, it would be absolutely useless because you would see that I miss ever I'm right. Alright? So what I need to do is at some point in the fight to get her into this kind of situation. Alright? Now this works for stage as well as for screen. For stage, you'd use a slightly different technique, and what you'd actually do is slap the shoulder like that when you hit her. So we look at each other, okay? You see me go back like that. I'm gonna come forward and swing it across like that. You're gonna jerk your head that way, and go in that direction, head first, like that. Ready? Don't that hard, I hit you. <laughs>
but it is quite difficult to do. And the thing about it is first, if you go too shallow on it, you're going to hit my nose, which is big enough anyway. And if you go too deep, you're going to hit me in the ear, and that is dangerous. <coughs> so, I want you to do a couple of practice slaps. <laughs> Just go back, right? Thank you. <laughs> well, do a couple of soft ones. I come in, but not before, 
you move your head up and you just put your hands <coughs> like that. Right? Downwards like that. But off the floor. Okay? So just twist yourself around a little more. That one. Okay. So slowly. As I come in, you get up, you move your hands up off your elbow, and I will kick you there. And what will happen is that if the shudder will go through your body, so you won't actually have to do any acting. <laughs> what will happen is they will see the shudder in your body and you will fall back. The danger thing here is I kick your hands and then you belt yourself in the face. So you make sure they're just to one side. My kick will not be coming like that. It will be coming off over in that direction. But what? don't let them see that. So once the contact is made, then you go down. Right. So, you're down on the floor, having a bright pacing, he's just been beaten up. I'm calling you all the names under the sun. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk around in this direction here, take one look at you, then I'm going to come in and kick you. Alright, so that will be the timing. So, I'm saying you're a nasty, horrible man, and I don't like you, and <laughs> you need a new dentist. Then in I come. Right. Now, with a kick that violent, you can have a bit more of a reaction, so it should send you sailing back a bit more. Alright, here we go. You ready? If you're not ready, tell me. Ready. Right, so you don't have to pretend that you're asleep. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so you'd be down here, <coughs> split, spitting blood out, right, <coughs> keeping an eye on me. Ready? Here we go. So I'm going to come in, I'm going to come over this side, I'm going to turn around. You're up too soon now. Right. All right? It's got to be something that the audience doesn't realise what's going to happen. Coming round here, you're looking at me, you're watching me, I'm going to take a look, I'm going to call you all the nuns, um, and then I'm going to come in and kick you. That wasn't good, we'll do it one more time. Ready? Don't hold your hands in front of your face. Turn a little more this way. Ah, it's a joy. It's lovely having all these guinea pigs. <laughs> <laughs> right, concentrate, here I come. Right, you bastard. <laughs> earlier on today, everything you make as safe as possible. You don't want anyone ever getting hurt doing any of this stuff. Now, as just to finish off, one last wonderful clip from Rob Roy. Do you all know the film, 1995? Um, this, we had four months rehearsal for. Uh, four months for three fights, but this was the main fight. You have, it was a very difficult fight to do because you have Liam Neeson playing Rob Roy, who's six foot four and was fighting with this big broadsword, Scottish broadsword. And you've got Tim Roth, who's about five foot two, <laughs> fighting with a little English sword. And when I first saw this and what we had to do with it, I thought this was going to be a real problem. I thought people might laugh at it. Just to fill you in with the background, Tim Roth, thoroughly nasty piece of work, plays a dandy the whole time, has raped Rob Roy's wife, stolen all his cattle, basically made his life a bit of a nightmare. And he is known as being a dandy and um, a bugger of boys and women and not a very nice person. <laughs> but he is a good swordsman. And if you watch this fight, the tension has been building up all the way to the film. And it is like a gunfight. What do you mean end. it's like me? You just said just like me. I'm not a bugger boy, isn't I? Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> is it all right for me to be facing in this direction? <laughs> <laughs> and. <No. laughs> I won't go 
there. Um, um, <laughs> so uh, we used, when we did this, um, Tim Roth had a really bad time getting hold of it. He, he doesn't mind me saying this, but he really did have a bad time. Um, but what was happening is that I was, uh, William Hobbs arranged it. We had three fights to do, and I had to learn all the fights. And I had to learn all the fights from both sides, in sections. And whenever we got one of the actors in for rehearsal, he would come in and say to me, right, third fight, second section, left-hand side. And I would have to have it absolutely right in my mind, which is probably one of the most difficult jobs you can do, because you can't confuse an actor when he's coming in. You've got to get it absolutely right. We employed two stunt doubles. The stunt double for Liam Neeson we got from Hungary, who didn't say a word of English, <laughs> didn't understand anything except for sure. <laughs> so you talk to him and talk to him and he would go, for sure. <laughs> and you had no idea whether he did, but very, very nice guy. He, uh, he worked very hard. Uh, and an English sound guy for doing that. Um, watch for, you know, a fight is a fight. What makes a fight is the dramatic moments in the fight. Have courage to put spaces in so you can see the emotions of the people fighting. That's why I think we had uh, Michael Caden Jones, the director, had five cameras on this the whole time. Every take, five cameras. We had proper rehearsal, and that's what makes it a good fight. So have a look and enjoy.
Good fight. Thank you for being such a good audience.